let's come back to Africa and update on the elections conducted in South Africa. Passion results in the country's uh, national elections have started to trickle in. Recall that South Africans voted on Wednesday in what many view as the country's uh, most contested election since the 1994 democratic elections. The final results are expected to take days with the Independent Electoral Commission saying they will uh, be... They will be delivered by Sunday, although they will come earlier. South Africans are waiting with bated breath to see if their country, Africa's most advanced economy, about to enter a new era. With 52 parties on the ballot, voters had plenty of choice in a time where there has been a growing discontent over how the ANC is governing the country. Tagbo Agbazwe, Director, Pan-African Center for Policy Studies in Johannesburg, uh, joins me to discuss the South African election. Good to have you join us. Good afternoon. Greetings. Um, it is indeed a pleasure to be here with you. Um, greetings, viewers. All right. Uh, let's begin with what you make of the ANC struggling to get a, a clear majority after about 30 years of uh, dominance. What has changed? Well, I think that really the unfulfilled promises around economic empowerment, especially for the majority of the black population, um, there has been some interest in policies around black economic empowerment and affirmative action, but there has not been enough in terms of having um, a very robust um, strategy to take um, the vast majority of the country out of the poverty line. Um, the other area is issues around crime. Crime um, has continued to be a nagging problem, especially violent crime. It's continued to be a huge nagging problem in the country. Then there's this issue around utilities, um, especially electricity supply and water. Um, supply as well. Um, over the past few years, we've seen a lot of load shedding, which is extremely uncomfortable for an economy such as South Africa. It's not that the infrastructure is decaying, but what's happening is that the rate of development outpaces the rate of infrastructural development, particularly in the electricity area. It's a massive, massive, massive issue. Also, you've seen your new your millennials and your Gen Z um, population. So these are people who were born after apartheid, after the country came to democracy in 1994. So usually, um, usually when during elections, the rhetoric and the legacies around apartheid meant that there was an overwhelming sympathy towards apartheid. Um, but the population is replenishing. So you have a lot of population, a great deal of the population that's now young, 18, 20 year olds that, you know, um, have no direct connection with um, the um, historic apartheid and um, segregation um, uh, policies. So these, these, in addition to having a lot of splinter groups over the years that have broken out from the ANC. Um, initially, it was the UDM, the United Democratic Movement. Then it was the COPE. Then the Economic Freedom Fighters, which are very socialist and Marxist in orientation. And most recently, the Nkongo Siswe um, MK Party that is um, led by the former president, um, Jacob Zuma. So all of these splitter groups have meant that, um, you know, what would usually have been ANC votes, have now been diluted by these other parties. Yeah, the performance of uh, respective political parties, especially uh, the newly formed MK party backed by the former president, Jacob uh, Zuma. Uh, were you really surprised about, uh, about the polls? And um, we know that if the ANC does not get at least 50% uh, of the vote, they may need to resort to a coalition. Uh, what sort of coalition do you expect now? Well, the, the thing is this, is that if you look at prior, you know, most recent municipal elections, where the ANC struggled in the large metropolises to get 
um, um, to get the a majority of the vote, all the other major parties have shied away from forming coalitions with the ANC. They rather decided to put all their cattle, to put all their fish in one basket apart from the ANC. Um, so that would be interesting to see. The DA currently will most likely have somewhere between, say, 20 to 23, 24 percent of the vote at the end. Will they be able to form a coalition? Um, the DA has, um, it is reported that they've signed the memorandum of understanding um, with some others, with 10 other smaller parties. But if those other parties do not then make up the numbers for the DA, the DA may then consider, um, you know, coming into, uh, joining the ANC in the bedroom. But now the challenge is this. All the part, all these political, the top four major political parties have got huge, huge, huge ideological differences between them. DA is seen to represent, um, you know, your white capitalist, um, you know, um, 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 section of the society, your um, EFF, um, your economic freedom fighters are very socialist and Marxist. Um, the ANC. If All right, uh, um, one of the principal officers, uh, Floyd Kibambu, uh, is made um, a, a minister of finance and so on. But the ANC will have to be open to, if they're not able to get the majority, they'll have to uh, perhaps then go back to Jacob Zuma and eat the humble pie and, um, Mr. and, Tabo, um, I, I'm and sure see how to bring uh, we, we are still waiting for, for the outcome of this election. And so we, can, we cannot uh, predict what will happen? Anything could happen at the last minute. I, I wanted to take you up on, on, on what this result will mean for the ANC and uh, South Africa's political landscape. But I'm sure uh, we, we will be able to do this some, some other time. Uh, Tagbo Abazwa is uh, the director of an Africa Center for Policy Studies in Johannesburg. Thank you for joining us on the world now. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Bye.